Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. This Civ overview is all about the Teutons. Now the Teutons are classified as an infantry civilization, though as we'll see they're maybe better described as a booming civilization. They have a great set of bonuses designed to help their economy grow, while also providing a lot of defense to help them survive in the meantime. In fact, I find they're one of the easiest civilizations to overboom with, as their cheaper farms make it natural to create villagers on multiple town centers, to the point it's sometimes easy to forget about military at all. Now, I've already done an overview on Teutons in the past, but it's a bit outdated at this point and I thought it could use a redo. In this video, I'll be breaking down their bonuses, unique unit, and techs to hopefully give you some ideas of how to get the most out of them. Let's check them out. To start with, their team bonus is that their units resist conversions. That's a bit vague, and it turns out they take around 50% longer to convert. On average, that gives you an extra 4 seconds for knights, to the point they regularly take the maximum amount of time to convert. That's pretty big, as monks are one of their most dangerous counters. There's still a lot of randomness in conversion times, so it's not a guarantee they'll beat a monk one-on-one, -on -one, but certainly stand a noticeably better chance. The bonus also stacks with faith and about half the time they survive until the hard-coded maximum conversion time period. Remember, this is also true for your allies as well, which might be nice for some of those elephant civilizations. As a side note, buildings are unaffected by the bonus and just take the normal time to convert. Moving on by keeping with the monk theme, their first civ bonus is that monks heal from twice as far away. That's a difference of having 4 tiles of range before and 8 tiles after. There's not much to say about this, it just keeps their monks a bit safer while healing, and overall I wouldn't consider it a very significant bonus. That being said, if you're someone who already likes to use monks for healing, this is probably a great bonus for you, second only to the Byzantines' faster healing monks. Their next bonus is that all of their towers garrison twice the number of units. For regular towers, the garrison maximum is 5, whereas for Teutons they have space for 10. They really pack them in there. Not only does that help keep villagers safe when using defensive towers around your stone or gold for example, it also leads to a corresponding increase in the number of arrows that can be fired. As I've recently looked at, the exact number of arrows depends on the damage per second of the villagers you've garrisoned, but rest assured you are getting more damage output as you put more villagers in them. I found this is most helpful in tower rushes where you sometimes have 6 or 7 villagers to garrison. Having more arrows from those extra villagers also helps in tower battles, tilting the scales in your favor. In terms of some more obscure AoE trivia, the extra space also allows bombard towers to fire some unintended extra cannonballs. It's impractical considering how much it actually reduces your overall damage compared to just having the units outside the tower, but it looks cool. Continuing with the tower theme, their next bonus is that they get murder holes for free immediately upon hitting castle age. Right away that saves 200 food and 100 stone, or 200 stone if you're playing without the modern expansions. The fact that it's a castle age technology means this isn't going to be an early part of any tower rush though. There are also ways to get around needing this technology, with either chaining towers within range of each other, or using palisades or houses to block access for melee units. In fact, considering its stone cost, it can be hard to justify researching for most civilizations instead of just building an extra tower with roughly the same amount of stone. On the other hand, getting it for free as Teutons carries a lot of convenience, especially since you don't need a university first. It synergizes with other bonuses and technologies you already have for towers and castles, helping your stone buildings feel just a bit more self-sufficient now that they can defend themselves. A quick note here as well is that you shouldn't feel like you have to tower rush as Teutons just because you have multiple tower bonuses on paper. It doesn't necessarily complement the Teutons' booming potential as much as for example a fast castle strategy would. If you're particularly close to your opponent or on a map like Nomad, it can be a nice surprise strategy, but I wouldn't say Teutons excel with offensive towers as much as say a top tier tower rushing sieve like Koreans. That being said, defensive towers definitely play to the Teutons' strengths, with the extra garrison space alone making them top tier at defending against tower rushes, 
with towers of their own. For me, their biggest bonus though, which defines the civilization the most, is that their farms cost 33% less. I think that wording disguises how good the bonus is, and another way to word it is that they can build three for the price of two. It goes without saying that this gives them one of the most efficient wood to food conversion ratios possible outside of obviously Malay infinite fish traps. Now it's really up to you whether you want to play the discount to give you 50% more farms with the same wood spent, or just pocket the wood savings for use elsewhere. Long term, it has the potential to pay back more than maybe any other economic bonus. By feudal age, you'll probably have two to four farms, meaning you've saved 40 to 80 wood already. That's not earth shattering, but it helps you get your farming eco up a bit faster and helps with farm intensive strategies like scouts or if you're missing some sheep or boar early on and need to farm a bit sooner. By the time you reach castle age though, those savings can easily be 200 wood, enough that it becomes easier to put down important buildings or start to have more farms than usual. That synergizes particularly well with knights, but any strategy theoretically benefits to some degree. The extra farms can also help you with villager production from multiple town centers, letting you get an even larger economic advantage over time. Over the course of a game, the 20 wood savings for each farm can lead to hundreds or potentially even thousands of wood. Looking at the actual online stats from Vubli in 1 vs 1 games, in practice Teutons tend to have collected around 10% less wood than other civilizations, while having an above average number of villagers and food collected after the mid game. It's perhaps an oversimplified explanation, but it could be that the cheaper farms are freeing up lumberjacks to collect more food or other resources as needed. Their last civ bonus is that their town centers have an extra 10 garrison space. This has been changed since Age of Conquerors, where the bonus was for more attack and line of sight. That was arguably a better bonus because it helped find sheep more quickly. Before that, in Age of Kings, it was an extra 5 range on town centers, which was even stronger. Even if this bonus is a bit weaker than in previous versions, the extra garrison space can still be a nice bonus. It has the potential to save some extra units in a pinch, as it's normally possible to run out of garrison space when you're under a lot of pressure. It also means their town centers will fire more arrows when fully garrisoned, and more firepower is always a good thing. So those are their civ bonuses. It's a lot of defensive minded bonuses for buildings with a nice economic bonus thrown in there as well. While they might be a bit slower out of the gate, assuming you can survive long enough, the Teutons eventually start to become an offensive powerhouse. A fitting microcosm for the civilization that represents their slow but powerful progression is their very fashionable unique unit, the Teutonic Knight. In addition to being the only unit to wear a cape, they also boast strong stats, with high HP for infantry, 17 attack for the elite version, and especially high melee armor. The elite Teutonic Knight, in fact, ends up with up to 13 armor against melee damage. That's enough to reduce most melee units to doing under 5 damage per attack, making them virtually unparalleled with equal numbers. I say virtually because this is a computer game of course. That being said, a few units have some notable bonuses that make them interesting cases worth testing. For example, while Teutonic Knights can narrowly beat Samurai with equal numbers, with more balanced resources, the Samurai start to have the advantage because of their cheaper cost and plus 10 attack against unique units. In a similar way, Jaguar Warriors lose with equal numbers, but with more balanced resources they end up about evenly matched. Arguably their only melee counter is the Elite Cataphract. With a bonus against infantry and trample damage, they end up winning easily with equal numbers. But while they hold up well to all but a few melee units and tear most infantry civilizations apart, Teutonic Knights struggle a lot against monks and ranged units. That's because of their slow movement rate and relatively low pierce armor. They are in fact the slowest as all units except monks and Persian war elephants start faster and those two units benefit from techs to specifically improve their speed. It might be hard to believe, but this is after a speed boost in an expansion's patch. They feel like something taken straight out of a horror movie as they menacingly walk toward fleeing units. In terms of some other hidden stuff, they also have a couple of attack bonuses against eagles and buildings. You'd be forgiven for thinking they have some sort of attack bonus against infantry or cavalry based on their performance, but in reality that's all coming down to their melee armor. They also have a relatively quick creation time of 12 seconds, which is much faster than say the 22 for pikemen or 21 seconds for swordsmen. Even as far as unique units go, that makes them relatively easy to mass, and only a select few are created faster. 
In general, infantry unique units tend to have some of the shortest creation times, given how much easier it is to spam barracks than castles. In fact, the real bottleneck is usually their cost, at 85 food and 40 gold. That makes them, in fact, the most expensive infantry unit in the game. That sort of makes sense to me though, given how well they perform in their role as melee killers. It follows from that that the elite upgrade is also fairly expensive, at 1200 food and 600 gold. For that high cost though, you get a lot of value, with an extra 20 HP, 5 attack, and 5 melee armor. It's quite a bit for a single upgrade, though interestingly it doesn't come with a speed boost, which remains their biggest weakness. You do have access to Squires, which is always a tech you want to remember to pick up if you're even making a handful of Teutonic Knights. Overall, they look really great on paper and work well in head-to-head -head fights, but in reality their slow movement means you're rarely getting the fights you want. They work well in roles like protecting Siege or defending a castle from Rams. They're also sometimes viewed as a counter to trash units, taking 100 attacks from any unit without a gold cost. Early on, with small numbers, they're liable to be hit and run, but in the post-imperial stage, it often gets to a point not everyone can micro everywhere, meaning Teutonic Knights can get themselves into favorable matchups against overlooked groups of units. Moving on, let's take a look at their Castle Age unique tech, Ironclad. For 400 wood and 350 gold, it gives your siege units an extra 4 melee armor. At first glance, that might sound a bit pricey, as that's more than enough for 2 mangonels, so this isn't a tech you'll necessarily pick up during a Castle Age push. This one's more about long-term value if you're going into a lot of Siege, which you probably should be as Teutons anyway. My view is always that if your Siege is taking a lot of melee damage, something has already gone wrong. But at the same time, it is addressing their biggest weakness. For Rams, which normally take 3 extra melee damage, this is most significant, since it means villagers, instead of doing 6 damage like they normally do, will do 2 damage to Teuton Rams instead. Next up, their second unique tech, Crenellations, gives their castles an extra 3 range. It's quite expensive at 600 food and 400 stone, but ends up making them the farthest firing castles in the game. The extra range for castles is useful for map control, and also allows them to fire at bombard cannons, even with siege engineers. They're still outranged by trebuchets and Turk bombard cannons, but with a few well-protected trebuchets, you can counter that threat as well. Another effect of the technology is that garrisoned infantry contribute to the number of arrows fired. The game treats the infantry as being archers that fire 5 ranged attack every 2 seconds, which is the same as an unupgraded crossbowman. Together, these effects make the extra large area around your castles even more dangerous than usual. That's useful both defensively in protecting your economy, as well as offensively with castle drops. Remember, they can also produce Teutonic Knights quickly in an emergency, which can fight off any melee units or siege units attacking the castle itself. So those are the Teuton's unique unit and techs. They're often thought of as a defensive civilization that's good for players that like to turtle behind walls, which they are good at. But towers and castles can be used just as easily to put pressure on an opponent's town as well. Teutons win with raw power in the late game, which we can see with their towers, castles, unique unit, heavy cavalry, and tanky siege. To dive a bit deeper into this idea, let's move on and take a quick look at their tech tree, starting with the archers. Overall, I'd say they have a pretty generic archer rush, with slight help from cheaper farms, but no thumbring, arbalest, bracer, or cavalry archer upgrades. The elite skirmisher is also impacted by missing bracer, meaning the only fully upgraded unit here is the hand cannoneer. For that reason alone, I'll give the Teutons a lackluster C for their archery range. Moving on to the infantry, here you have all of the infantry upgrades, plus the Teutonic Knight. Despite how well it matches up with nearly every other melee unit, I wouldn't say it's an automatic A+, based on that fact alone, as if anything, they're even more susceptible to infantry's normal counters. Overall, I'd say it's definitely an above average A- for infantry, mostly thanks to the situationally powerful Teutonic Knight on top of an overall average-ish barracks. Now let's take a look at the cavalry. To begin with, they have a good scout rush with the cheaper farming bonus to help boost your early food economy. They are a bit unusual in lacking both Hazara and the Light Cavalry upgrade, though I don't see this as a huge deal since scouts can be useful just to harass without necessarily being upgraded later. They can then follow that up with a solid Night Rush, and generally find it easier to boom at the same time because of their cheaper farms. Paladins are always nice to have, though in this case they'll be slower than those of most other civilizations. 
I feel like you're channeled down the night line with the civilization pretty early on, and that should always be a major consideration as your game plan. Overall, I'd give them a solid B+, held back by a lack of variety and any cavalry specific bonuses. Next up, we have the Siege. Here we have a good variety, including Bombard Cannons and Siege Onagers, all with Siege Engineers. In fact, the only thing they're missing is the Siege Ram. Considering they also have Ironclad in here for a bit of extra melee armor, I'll give them an A-. They have lots of options and even a decent unique tech, but are not completely dominant with Siege like some of the other top tier civilizations. Switching things up, let's take a look at the Navy. Early on, the farming bonus saves a tiny bit if you're making farms, but with more economy coming from fishing ships here, it's usually not that big of a help. I'd give their early navy a C+. Later in the game, you'll find they're also missing a lot of important techs, like Bracer for Galleons, Shipwright for the discount and faster creation, Dry Dock for the faster movement, and Elite Cannon Galleon. The extra range on your castles does help defend the shore a bit more than usual, and your farms again save some wood but overall they're outmatched by a lot of other civilizations on the water. In this case, I'll give them another C plus for the late game for an overall C plus grade. Taking a quick look now at the monks, you have every tech there except herbal medicine and extra healing range makes your monks good at that anyway. Their units of course also resist conversions, not so much helping your monks, but definitely weakening those of your enemy. I'd say it's an A, given the fact that you have every tech you could want, and I found the extra range is more useful than you might think when you see it in practice. Next up is defenses. This is of course one of the things that they're best known for. Here we can see everything is available from the university except for architecture. I'd say they still end up with strong castles though on account of getting hoardings and their unique tech crenellations for more range. Their towers are also exceptionally strong throughout most of the game, benefiting from free murder holes and extra garrison space. Overall, even if they're missing Bracer for a bit of extra range on their keeps and architecture for a bit of HP, I'd say it's still an A+. If you're a player that likes to make a lot of towers or castles to defend yourself from raiding while you boom, the Teutons are definitely a civilization you'll enjoy. And finally, taking a quick look at the economy, you have a solid variety of economy techs with all of the important ones except gold shaft mining. Their main economic power though comes from their farm discount. Personally, I consider it to be one of the strongest wood bonuses in the mid to late game and one of the more useful bonuses for booming on multiple town centers. That being said, it does take a while to get going as you tend to rely on other food sources for the early part of the game, and I think some other civilizations get a decent lead over the Teutons early on. I'm going to say it's an A grade, though it's more like a C plus early on that improves over the next 10-20 to 20 minutes until it's really on another level. So to wrap up, the Teutons tech tree overall really works well with their focus on booming and defending early on. You'll find if you're able to properly develop your economy, you'll have access to all of the most powerful non-elephant units in the game. Whether it's the Teutonic Knights, Paladins, Siege Onager, and even Bombard Tower, the overarching theme is always slow but unstoppable. The trade-off of powerful units is of course that they also depend a lot on gold in the late game, made even worse by their lack of light cavalry and bracer on their skirmishers. In terms of some possible game plans, they're certainly able to open with militia, scouts, towers, or archers when the situation calls for it. But considering how long it takes the economy bonus to kick in, they're probably best suited for knights. Alternately, if you're on an easily walled map like Black Forest, I'd recommend playing defensively and heading for your late game siege, infantry, and paladin, supported by defensive buildings, and a few monks if you like. But that's all for this one. I hope that gives you some ideas to try as Teutons in your next game. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.